our bodies were superior. It's another time that God has given unto us. Yet another great day for us. Rejoice and be glad in this name. I'm glad this morning even to have this opportunity. We have to see Mama Mahali Hapa. Before I invite our preacher, I thank God for each one of you who is watching us this morning. May God bless you so much. Wherever you are, we thank God for you. We appreciate the fact that you can tune in to watch us this morning. And so we thank you so much. May the Lord bless you so much. We are happy this morning for the Lord has given us another day. And we thank him for being alive and that we are able to worship him. We are able to speak his word this morning because of the grace that he has given unto us this morning. I am delighted to be in the Lord. I am born again this morning. My name is Sipora Mwangi, Pastor. I love Jesus as my personal Savior, and it is my delight even to serve him and to dwell in his house all the days of my life. I thank God this morning because he's aware of what is happening even in our nation. He cares for us. He he knows that he has good thoughts for us, as we said last time, plus for welfare and not for evil. Our work as believers is to stand in the gap, even for the sake of our nation. The Bible says that when God was angry with the children of Israel and he started destroying them, that Moses stood between the living and the dead, and the plague was stayed from Israel. So our business as the church of Jesus Christ is to stand between this disease and even between our lives. It is to stand between even those who are sick and between those who are healthy because we need the sick to be healed and we need the, 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 the healthy not to be infected with this disease. So we have a great work to stand in the gap for our nation because as we know even Jesus Christ when God was angry with the world, the Bible says in Hebrews 12, 24, that he became the mediator of the new covenant. He stood between us and God, so that God was no longer angry with humanity as far as we gave our lives to Jesus Christ. So let us stand in the gap, because this journey we shall finish well, and God is together with us, in the mighty name of Jesus. So I thank God this morning, and I know that you are you are following us. Just to stay until the end, and I know that you are going to be blessed. We are from Life Mission Christian Church, Naivasha, Jerusalem. We love you so much, and we know that God has a special message for you this morning. And indeed, you are going to be blessed because our God is together with us. And Spirit is here. So let us continue to hear the word of God because the Bible says that man shall not, not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. We shall put on our masks, we shall keep the distance, we shall wash our hands, sanitize our hands. That cannot feed the spirit man, but the spirit man is fed by the word of God. And so we thank you this morning, and we know that God is going to bless you. So this morning, I want to welcome our senior pastor, who is my husband, his overseer, Joseph Mwangi, and he's going to minister the word of God. But before that, I would like us to pray as we hear the word of God this morning. Let us pray. Our Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you because of your goodness upon our lives. Thank you that this is the day that you have made, and you have made it better for each one of us, O oh God. Wherever Father, people are watching from this morning, our dear brothers and sisters, we commit them in your able hands. Them that are sick, may you heal them, Lord. Those who are discouraged, we are going to encourage them, our Father. And we pray that the Spirit of God shall give your servant even utterance as he speak your word this morning. Thank you because you shall communicate even your heart this morning, our Father. And you shall encourage us, O King of Glory, because you have a good plan for each one of us. We just appreciate you, Lord. Thank you for our nation. We are standing in the gap, dear Father, and we are declaring that, Lord, we are coming out of this pandemic in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for your good plan and purpose. We appreciate you, Lord, and give you all the honor and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Welcome.
Thank you very much, Pastor Spora. Thank you very much, all the brethren that are with us here in our online service. As uh, you have already been told, my name is uh, Vasia Joseph Mwangi from Life Mission Christian Church, Naivasha. We want to welcome all of you uh, as we bring the word of God online today. We thank God that he is a faithful God. He has been with us. He has protected us. He has sustained us. And today we are grateful unto him for every blessing that he has accorded unto us. I want to go straight to the word of God. And the message that I have today is entitled God of Divine Intervention. I want all of you to know and to understand this day that we have a God and is a God who cares for us and is a God of divine intervention. I want us to read from the word of God in the book of 2 Kings chapter 6 and we are going to read from verse 24. 2 Kings chapter 6 and we are going to read from verse 24. And it came to pass after this that ben the king of Syria, gathered all his host and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until a nurse's head was, was sold for four score pieces of silver, and the fourth part of a cup of doves done for five pieces of silver. And as the king of Samaria, and as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help my Lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor? or out of the wine press. And the king said unto her, What aided thee? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son, that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son, and did eat him, and I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son, that we may eat him. And she had hid her son. And he came to pass, and the king heard the words of the woman, that he rent his clothes, and he passed by upon the wall. And the people looked, and behold, he had sack clothes with thee upon his flesh. Then he said, Go, God did do so, and more also to me, if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, shall stand on him this day. Verse 32, but Elisha sat in his house, and the elders sat with him, and the king sent a man from before him, but ere the messenger came to him, he said to the elder, see ye how this son of a murderer had sent to take away my head. Look, when the messenger cometh, shut the door, and hold him fast at the door. Is not the sound of his master's feet behind him? And when he yet talked with them, behold, the messenger came down unto him and said, Behold, this evil is of the Lord. What should I wait for the Lord any longer? Chapter 7, verse 1. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and the two measures of barley for a shekel in the gift of Samaria. I want to thank God this morning because of his word. There was a very desperate situation uh, in Samaria, in Israel. The word of God says that uh, their enemy uh, had besieged them. They were completely surrounded by their enemy. And there was a great famine in the land. And uh, there was a lot of problems 
in the land of uh, Samaria. When the enemy had besieged them, there was famine, there was no food, there was no insecurity. These people were all very desperate. And the word of God says that there was a lot of hunger in the land because of what was happening. Uh, people started cannibalizing, feeding on other peoples. There was that instance that we have read in the word of God. One woman gave her, uh, her child to agree with another woman that they should eat their children. And they ate one of the children, and the next day when they were supposed to eat the children of the other woman, the other woman had her child. And uh, this uh, woman went and complained to the king. The word of God says that uh, uh, things were so bad, so terrible, that even uh, the people were eating uh, donkeys as a, as, a, as a last resort. There was a lot of insecurity. And uh, when this was happening, the king of Israel started blaming the man of God, the prophet of God, uh, by the name of Elisha. And he thought that Elisha is the man that had caused all these problems. And he sent an executioner to go and uh, uh, kill Elisha because of what was happening in the land. Right? But I want to thank God that God was speaking to Elisha. And God showed to Elisha what was happening. And uh, Elisha told them that the executioner was told his elders that were gathered together with him that the executioner was coming and was actually almost entering into the house. And uh, the word of God says <clears throat> that when the executioner came, uh, he was not able to enter into the house. And we read in the word of God uh, that Elisha gave a word, a word of prophecy, a word of hope. And he said, tomorrow, such a time like this, the problem will have uh, ceased. And uh, one of the, uh, the, the one of the people that were one of the policemen or the officers that were there say it would not happen. How could such a problem end within a day? How could they get the food within just one day? But God said through his servant, you will see with your own eyes, but you will not partake of the provision of God. But I want to thank God that God has always a way of intervening. When there was no hope, when there was no security, when people were desperate, God intervened. And he intervened through a very <clears throat> and intervened through a way that was not uh, common. Uh, they did, people didn't know that God would intervene in such a way. The word of God says that uh, outside the city, there were four leprous men. And these men had been put aside. They had been isolated. Maybe they had been put on quarantine. And they were put there so that uh, they could not infect the other people of the land with the leprosy. And when these four leprous men stayed there outside the gate of the town, they started having some ideas, and they started talking among themselves, and they started saying one to another, if we continue staying here, we are going to perish. If we go to the camp of the Syrians, maybe they will kill us, maybe they will spare us. And so they decided to take us some action because if they stayed there, they could die because of famine, because of lack of food. If they went to the camp of their enemy, 
maybe they could be destroyed. So they decided that they should take an action and move forward towards to the camp of the Syrian. And the word of God says that they started moving. And you know, uh, leprous people, they have a problem in walking. And when they were walking, God magnified their steps so much that uh, when, the, uh, when, when the, the Syrian armies heard their coming, they heard as if it is a multitude of uh, people coming to invade them. And they started uh, panicking and they started talking and they saying that the king of Israel has organized with the other kings to come and uh, destroy them, to come and invade them as a big team. And I want to thank God that God is faithful. God is great because God went, went, uh, went before them. When they arrived at the tent of the enemies, where the camp of the enemy was, they found that there was, uh, the, 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 the army had fled and they had left a lot of tents. They had left a lot of food. They had left a lot of silver. They had left a lot of provision. And they started eating and uh, drinking. And when they were full, they started taking some food. And they went and hid the food somewhere. And, uh, uh, and when they were doing that, uh, when they were doing that, they also remembered their fellow uh, Israelites. And they sent a word and they said uh, to the people that were guarding the land at night that they have already uh, seen that the uh, camp of the Syrians is empty. The Syrians are not there. There is a lot of food. There is a lot of provision. And so uh, the leaders of the land sent some people some uh, to go and inquire, to go and uh, make sure that the report was true. And when they went there, they found it was true. There was a lot of food. There was, there was a lot of uh, things. Uh, there was a lot of silver. There was a lot of gold. They had left a lot of provision. And the word of God says, that uh, all these provisions were taken and they carried to the gate of Samaria. And by the morning, praise be to the name of the living God, Amen. there was divine provision. God had provided unto his people because there was a lot of food, there was a lot of flour, there was a lot of uh, uh, name, any type of food. And because the people were very hungry because of a prolonged siege and a prolonged famine, they were they are very hungry and they came and they lined up. And I, 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 I want to thank God that the word of God came as it as just as the servant of God had prophesied, because it was tomorrow a time like this. God will provide. And I thank God that the word of God is true. My friends, we are having a God of divine intervention. We believe in a God of divine provision. Sometimes uh, we, may be, we may be experiencing very hard moments. We may be undergoing a lot of pain. We may be undergoing a lot of frustration. We may be having no hope, but I want to tell you and tell myself this day that our God is God is a God of divine intervention, and He comes in the right time because He came in the right time when the Israelites could not have any other way uh, of getting out of the problem. God came within hours in the situation was transformed completely. There was a food, there was security, there was a peace, 
Everybody was happy. And I want to tell us this day that our God is a God that cares for us. Even in our nation, even in the families, even uh, individuals that are having problems. Some are in the hospital, they are sick. Some are in their homes, they don't have food. I want to encourage you this morning that we have a God, a God of divine provision, a God of divine intervention, and he is going to intervene. I want to show you another example from the word of God. Open with me uh, the book of uh, Esther. I want us to see a word in the book of Esther. Esther chapter 3, verse 8 to 15. Chapter, ch chapter 3, verse 8 to 15. And the Haman said unto King Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered abroad, and it is passed among the people in all the province of the kingdom. And their laws are diverse from all people. Neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore it is not for the king's profit to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written that they be destroyed. And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business to bring it into the king's treasuries. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman, the son of Hamadeda, the Agagite, the Jews' enemy. And the king said unto Haman, The silver is given to thee, the people also, to do with them as to do with them as it seemed good to thee. Then were the king's scribes called on the thirteenth day of the first month. And there was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants and to the governors that were over every province and to the rulers of every people of every province according to the, to the writing thereof and to every people after their language. In the name of King Ahasuerus was it written and sealed with the king's ring. Verse 13. And the letters were sent by posts unto all the king's province to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, literal children and women, in one day, even upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth of the month, which is the month of Adar, to take the spoil of them for a prey. The copy of the writing of a commandment to be given in every province as was published unto all the people that they should be ready against that day. The posts, posts went out, being hastened by the king's commandment, and the decree was given in Shushan, the palace. And the king and the Haman sat down to drink, but the city Shushan was perplexed. Uh, we have read from the word of God of, a, of another situation that was very, very desperate. A man called Haman, who was among the seniors in the government of uh, King Ahasuerus, uh, convinced the king that the Jews were not uh, obeying the laws of the land. And uh, he, con he managed to convince the king that a decree be issued against the Jews so that they should be executed. And uh, letters were written and they were sealed and they were dispatched and they had the signatory of the king. And this letter had the key letters a uh, 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 permission had been given for the ex uh, uh, for the ex uh, execution of all the Jews, the young, the old, all of them were supposed to be killed on on a certain day, and uh, every plan was put in place. Uh, every province 
was served with the, the king's order, and even the day and the time was uh, planned for. And all the finances that would be cost were already provided by this man called Haman. Write down God that even when everything was said and uh, it was only remaining uh, uh, the time to come and all the Jews were to be excommunicated, uh, were, were to be ex, uh, ex, executed, God intervened because we have a God of divine intervention. The word of God says that tonight the king got some insomnia. He was not able to sleep. And when he was at such a state, he asked to be given the books of remembrance. And when the books of remembrance was brought to him, he found that a man by the name Mordecai, who was serving at his gate as a watchman, had one time saved him from death from a people that were plotting to overthrow his government. And he asked what was done to this man Mordecai because of the act of saving him that he did. And he was told that nothing was done to Mordecai. I want to thank God that uh, God opened a window and through that window uh, Jews were deliver from excommunication because when it was told that Mordecai was not rewarded uh, the king called for uh, for somebody uh, to come and uh, reward Mordecai and the person that was called to reward him was this man the enemy of the Jews by the name of Haman and when Haman was killed, when Haman came, and uh, he was told that uh, he should honor Mordecai. And he honored Mordecai. And to cut a long story short, I want to tell you, my friends, brethren, that God is a divine intervention. Because one time, the word of God says that uh, God, one, one day God intervened and uh, all that had been planned was brought down and uh, the plan did not succeed. If you read the same book of Esther chapter 6 verse 9 uh, verse 9 and 10 I want to see I want you to see the end story of, of what happened at last. Chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. And let this apparel and the horse. I want us to read Esther chapter 6. Sorry. I want us to read verse chapter 6. And verse 9. And let this apparel and the horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that they may arrive.